What's good, everyone? What is good? James Hicks here, Hicks New Media. Welcome to the Digital Collective. Got a great show for you today. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical delay, but that's actually what it's all about in live streaming it sometimes, right? Sometimes you have to work through the trials and tribulations of internet connectivity, hardware connectivity, and listen, the guy I'm talking to is across the pond, so we're, we're like streaming 8,000 miles away. So we're going to talk about using social media and live streaming to grow your business, Right. So taking advantage of multicasting, multi-streaming, using the different social platforms, and then really the advantages of using something like a podcast and the value that podcasting brings. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring on Mr. Ash Borland. Huh? James, man, I'm so excited. It, you know, um, what time is it? it, it it's, we, we were supposed to start 26 minutes ago, right? 10.30 here. 10.30 at night. Or 10:26, something like that. What? Why? Why? Why are we slightly off off schedule, Mister Borland? Because I've just moved. I've finally moved over to Ecamm. Okay. Which is an amazing story. Fantastic. However, I haven't used a, my MacBook Pro arrived yesterday. Yeah. And then for some reason we decided to have a massive <laughs> hiccup of technical nothingness. wasn't It wasn't recognizing the um, Broadcaster Pro. And that was the problem, and it just wasn't picking up any audio. And there, I have a squeaky chair. Oh it's just my! Just a disaster of life it, was happening at one this scenario. Dominoes were falling. It just wasn't looking yeah. good. But listen, first and foremost, thank you for the time. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, welcome officially to the Ecam family. You're going to enjoy and love the capability and the functionality that you have. Uh, no one can tell their, I call it their origin story. I, I gave just a little bit of an overview of who you are and what you do kind of in the description, but I really wanted to wait and let folks hear it directly from you. Who is Ash Borland, if you don't mind, sir? Oh, who is Ash Borland? Um, that's always a hard question to answer because I'm a lot of things to lots of different people. <laughs> um, but in a nutshell, in our community, the community that me and you mix in, and, and that is I'm a... Um, I'm an obsessive content creator. I make more content than people think is humanly possible. Um, I'm a podcaster, a coach, a consultant, content creator, um, and massive family man. And that's kind of me in a nutshell, if, but without going too deep into my boring life. But if, it's, if it can be created, then I'll do it, and I'll do it 100 times a day <laughs> if I can. <laughs> If it can be created, so I, I love that, right? So you're 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 a consummate um, adventurer. You're you're always someone looking to do. So Listen again. Every time I log on to any social network, I see some micro content that you put out on various <laughs> subject matter, and and that's a good thing. That me that means you're you're out there doing the good work, right? So you're either talking about how to podcast, why podcasting. You're talking about live streaming. You're talking about. Uh, mortgage and financials and things of that nature so it's, it's a wide gamut and again you're, you're not just one person you're not just ash the podcast guy you you have different categories and different topics that you talk about yeah so like with that because because i people get confused by what I, what it is but it's it's actually the same thing i'm just really good at niching so like i am um, i'm a content i'm a content marketer mm. i understand content marketing and, and behavioral psychology and on a quite a deep level that's if i'm really honest i mean without that i do the lovely thing but that's i understand behavioral psychology and performing art performance technique and stuff very very um closely and i understood that that you know that skill translated into content marketing about seven about five seven five maybe seven years ago um but then what's happened over this proceeding of the number of years is that I've carved out niches that are very specific to, and the, and so I, I'm very well known in the UK mortgage space is how I got known right. as this content marketing guy. Um, but I now have kind of branched into the, in, in our community, the creative community, I'm going into that podcasting space. But if I'm really honest with you, I know a lot about a lot, but it's just trying to niche it through the, it's all about content and behavioral psychology and stuff within that, but it's all about pushing it through the eye of the niche, because if you don't right. niche it, then it doesn't work. So let's, let, let's dive into that, man. Cause again, I, I want to pick your brain about best practices, mm -hmm. about some of the things that you do. And, and really we look, I'm going to give you these flowers right now. We look at you really as definitely a subject matter expert and a technology resource in terms of how to do it the right way. 
right? And and what you do again, like, and I said that in all honesty, when, when I'm looking at your content, I'm saying whatever Ash is doing, it's working. So I'm kind of following those metrics. Talk to us a little bit about the importance of the niching down in terms of what you're doing, because because again, you're you're multifaceted and you know a lot of things. It kind of means you don't have a whole bunch of Ash Borland channels out there. You you know about this and this and this, but when you're focusing your content on specific types of deliverables and specific types of messages, talk to us about the importance again of the niche down. Yeah, so the niche is really important because um, so so we as humans want to get we we want to be multifaceted beings. We like this idea that we are more than one thing, and we all are more than one thing, you know. But the problem is if you want to be well in your marketing in your content in your social in your YouTube in your podcasting, whatever it may be, you have to um, serve a, a specific person and people come for the content and they'll stay for you. So the best way to do that is to um, decide a very specific audience and then speak to that specific person and they'll grow communities around that. This is really important. And um, you have to be careful as well if you're going to niche and if you're going to multi niche, you have to make sure you don't also pollute the same pond. So um, I don't have multiple channels. I have I choose multiple social platforms for different niches. Mm. And so um, that's something that like so for YouTube, for me, it's all podcasting mm -hmm. because YouTube doesn't really work on a hyper niche as much because it's a global scale, whereas hyper niching works very well on LinkedIn and on um, Facebook. So it's once you understand these types of things, but niching is the most important aspect of all of it. If you don't niche, you won't grow. Like, oh, it's not even great. You won't make a business from it. You won't make a business from it. That's the truth. And, uh, you know, a lot of within our community, you know, I'm a new creator in regards to this. I'm coming into the kind of creator space. Right. But like, I've been doing this full time. I'm a full time creator for like, well, for years. Um, I only just started realizing there was other people across the pond who did it. And I was like, oh, amazing. Um, but the, yeah, like niching is without the niche, you will not grow. And um, and the problem is that is a lie that's taught to us by our, and, and, and you get this, James, the creative world. What I'm trying to say this is the creative world. Anyone could work, make a living in this creator economy if right. they just got out of their own way and niched. But we're watching too many of us are watching influencers and trying to copy them and these influencers are the stars come on now of today that's oh, all they are the, yes. you know we could all that's the problem and this is quite an upset i find it quite upsetting i saw um mr beast i'm sorry i'm gonna get on the thing but i saw mr beast on joe rogan and as much as i like mr beast and you know joe rogan is whatever joe rogan is um he is a podcasting guy but the problem is the two of them there i was like this is not doing our our industry very well really right now because right. they're two massive icons of unachievable levels and actually there are hundreds of people and this is why i love walter strong's show so much is that mm. there are hundreds of people out there who are earning a decent living just because they're niching in the, and it's, so it's an incredibly weird scenario we're in right now that's, um, it's a weird situation that's, hey shouts out to walter strong not sure if he's watching the huddle there saturday mornings uh ridiculously early for me because he's on the east coast but i still <laughs> I still did his show, but uh, but that that's an excellent point. And I, I want to go back to that and I, I'm, I'm going to bring some of these comments up as well. The fact that you said anyone can do this content creation thing, right? It's 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 not easy to be out here in these streets, but anyone can do it from a side hustle perspective. But when you flip it and you really want to make this into a business, that's the whole part right there of where you've got to make some tough decisions with yourself tough decisions in terms of what the content is that you're going to put out there as well. Right. So side hustle, you just want to do some vlogging. You just want to show videos of the kids, have your YouTube channel or what, what your properties be a, just a, a gumbo of all kind of information. But when you really want to start serving a community, and turning this act, these activities into a business focus, that's when you got to be locked down and nailed down in terms of that delivery. So I, I, I really want to, I didn't want to pass over or gloss over that. I just want to put that back out there in the street. No, I completely agree. I actually, I think I was on the, um, I was on um, the stream show and we were chatting about this, I think to, to some extent where one of my biggest gripes and it is, and I won't go too deep into it here unless you want to go into it, James, but it's, there's a com that this with content there's this misconception of like you say if you want to do this as a career 
there are too many people who want to do it as a career, but they're approaching it as if they're a hobbyist. And there's too many people who are <laughs> hobbyists who are trying to approach it as a career, as in like the advice they're getting is different. Right. And so, you know, that that's something people need to understand. And there's nothing wrong with both. If you watch what I do, I approach this like a career. Yes. I wake up every day. I worked in sales before and my boss would never would have told me off if I made one sales call a week and said, well, do you know what though? That one call was 1% better every week. Like they'd absolutely castrate me. <laughs> so um, the, the reality, the way I see it is if it's the approach as a business, you need to be out there and you need to be out as much as you can. However, if you're doing it as a hobby, you don't need to be out there. You don't have to be out there as much as you, you just have to, you know, document what you're doing and enjoy the enjoy the kind of process. I love it. I love it. Let me let me get into some questions. But you know, folks out there in the in the audience, look, share this out because we were supposed again, we were supposed to start a little bit early, but you know, Ash is, is buying all this new hardware <laughs> and new equipment, so we, we're, we're slightly late on, on schedule. So make sure you share this out. I got this man on on channel right here, Mister Worthy's in the building. Anyone can do it. But should they do it is the real question. That, that, that's an interesting point as well, right? We all, we all have a desire, I think, to, to share our stories or to be engaging and to and, and, and interact with folks. But should everyone spin up a social digital platform and, and turn the lights on, press record kind of thing? That, that's an interesting statement that you've made right there, Steve. I don't uh, know. I don't know if they should. I don't know. It's hard. It's, I mean, hmm. James, you're, you're a master at this. You're incredible at what you do. And it it's a lot of work you didn't just wake up and do this do you know what i mean and they think that's yeah, the problem. I, didn't, I didn't wake up like this brother no that's that's true <laughs> I didn't. you didn't do you know what i mean i think that's the problem i think it's a lot of work and there are a lot of things that you can put time into the biggest issue i think people have is they they try it if you think you're going to give up don't don't start <laughs> like that's my biggest thing because you will waste your time you will waste your time but well Okay, let, let's get into that, right? Because I'm just I'm throwing the whole run of show and the whole topics out, out the window here. Oh, sorry, man. I just no, 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 no. Because this this is this this is even better. This, we'll this, this, this is the this is the good stuff right here, right? Because we're just going right off the dome. Think about that, right? You, why is it so difficult? So let's let's not talk about the niche part, but why is it so difficult to really get out there and? make a mark right you, youtube is free right you can create a youtube channel you can create a facebook brand page you can create uh what is it TikTok and all the other social platforms of where you can pick up your phone and share a message why is it so difficult to gain traction in, in from your humble perspective why is it so difficult to get to that I don't like the word influencer I, I, as well, so mm. I, I don't like that word. So I'd rather use the word advocate. That's that's what I'm going to yeah, be championing. I actually, you, I like you, that. you saw that. All right, that's that's coming it's out in, in a couple thing. of months. I so, love it. <laughs> but you know, so why is it so difficult? Is it because there's so much noise out there? I don't know if I'm answering the question myself, right? But why is it so difficult for someone to say, "I want to start up a channel talking about X, Y, Z," and f for me to get people to listen, watch, and engage and interact with it? So I I'm. I'm making a like, like a pact to myself to be more controversial and say how I actually feel. Come with it, man. More... Come with it. I'll put so the it's... explicit uh, tag on the screen if I got oh, you. Oh, no, no, no. Good. I'm not going to swear. Don't worry. Like, no, no, no. But what I mean is like, I'm trying, I'm making sure that like, I feel a certain way about a lot of this stuff and then I don't talk about it. And I have done a few, I think Steve Worthy show is the first time I was like, you know, what? I'm going to be really tell you how I actually feel. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's that difficult per se. I think that people's expectations are, wrong wow that's the that's the problem mm. you know I, I really do think that i think and, and this comes from you know i worked in finance before i got into this um, my friend is a lawyer um and the reason why i'm saying that is and i know you work in you know in the whole social like digital side of things is you didn't just wake up one day and could do your job you didn't my, my mate who's a lawyer trained for like five years to right. do just to even get into the role he is before he even moved further five years and the problem is with social is that we moan when we didn't see a result after four weeks. And, and I think the biggest thing with a lot of this, and, and you know what, the reason why I love this and, you know, and, and, and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't thank you more for you saying, you know, like that what you see in the way I do it is kind of an example of how it should be done. The reason why I started making content was because I looked and thought no one is seeing this in the way it needs to be seen. It is, it's a business and we need to approach it like this. And we approach it with a five-year growth strategy. Yes. And I'll tell you who was the one that flicked that switch for me. 
uh, Nick Nimmin. I had okay. Nick on my podcast. I love Nick. And Nick came on the show. And then it was all the stuff that happens after the show. You know, you know, when the show is gone and, I'm, yeah. and I was, he's explaining this stuff to me, he didn't know my background, didn't know where I was, what I did. And it was all going click, click, click. click. Right. I was like, so you just have to show up longer than anybody else, more consistent than anybody else, do more than anybody else for a longer. And if you can do that, it gets pretty lonely in the extra mile because you can do it. And the, that's the problem. Why I mean about it being difficult is the reality is when the bar is higher, most people can't jump over it. But the sad thing about it is the bar's not very high. Your own. This is where I say about behavioral psychology, our own, not your own, because I'm just the same. Our own psych psychological need to be validated and to feel like we're doing something well is stopping us from everything we want on the other side. And that is why I don't think everyone should do it because you've got to be willing to push through the, it's, it's mm. the emotional cycle of change. You've got to get through this valley of despair. If you can't get through that, you'll never ever see any results, but think about anything in your life. It's not for some reason, it's a bit of a Gary Vee thing. For some reason we look at social media, digital marketing out of the scope of what, of everything else in real life. Everything in life takes a long time. And where it landed for me was Nick. And then it was also my wife is a, is a grower. She grows um, food and things like that for us. Mm -hmm. And um, cause we're vegan. And so she planted these trees and I remember her planting these trees and she said, well, they aren't going to bear fruit for 10 years. And there was a weird moment in my head. And I was like, <laughs> that's YouTube. That's YouTube. It's not going to bear fruit. But if I plant 10 trees, I'm going to get 10 times the amount of Brother, fruit. Make it plain years. right there. Come on now. See, you didn't know we were, we were going to get real deep and philosophical, folks. Hope you got a, a pen. I am very and, deep and philosophical. Look, a, a pen and a notepad. No, listen, you said something. I was writing it down at the 1608 mark about... I, I forgot what it was because I'm I'm getting old, but that, that that's going to be the new title for it gets lonely in in the last mile or something of that nature. Yes, so, it gets lonely in the extra mile. Man, right? Come on, man, man. If you if y'all not listening to what Ash Borland is saying, then something something is wrong with you. And listen, Walter Strong just came in the room too, and we were just talking about you, sir. Gave you some kudos. Good to see you as well, man. Um, man, it's a marathon. Yeah, you're you're right. It it's, it's it's no no kind of way is it a sprint. No kind of way is it even a, a, a tag or, you know, where, where it's a relay because you're, you're in this really alone because no one will have that drive to do what it is that you've got in your mind. You've got the plans written down, but once you start implementing, they turn into goals, right? No one else has that same type of push and pull to get it done. Not your family, not your kids. They love you and all, not your parents or your grandparents because they don't see the whole you don't see the whole vision of what you're tr what you're looking to build. I'm not even gonna say trying to build, but what you're looking to yeah. build. So only you can really help manifest that and turn that in into reality. So, man, getting in the weeds, can't sleep at night, right? I mean, ha have the little notebook by your by your desk where you come up with an idea at three o'clock in the morning and you, you got to write. Or maybe that's just me. I, I don't know. I, I know I've got that. I've got more rocket books around here and it doesn't make sense because you only need one because they're erasable. <laughs> We're not going to go into that. We're not going to go into that conversation. <laughs> I bought mine after Christian Karashev Savage told me to get one and I love it. I ended up getting that from his. <laughs> yeah, watch out no, when no. you talk when you talk to Christian because he'll have you spending money too. You know, you know. He does. Shout, shout he was like, "Do you like this? Do you like that? Do you like?" I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, fine." <laughs> Steve over here talking about it's easy to start, but most people are not consistent. They can't manage their unrealistic expectations, and that, that that's hard to swallow sometimes, right? Even for we, we've got the best intentions, you think about it, but but just mm. not knowing not knowing what the process is because you haven't been through it. Right. And not knowing yeah. who to trust or who is telling you logical, realistic steps. We can read all the YouTube. I, look, I got YouTube books back here that I haven't read them all. And, and why should I read them all? Right. Again, because, because Daryl Eves hasn't gone down the same path that I'm trying to go. He, he's gone one particular path and he's been uh, phenomenally, uh, uh, successful at it, but he doesn't know what I'm trying to do. So who do you listen to or who, who do you pay attention to? My gut, my gut is telling me take a little bit from everyone, right? Yeah. Take, take a little Nick, take a little bit of Ash, take a little bit of, uh, uh, Batal, take, right. Take a little something from everyone and see where that fits into, into my mindset and, and the Michael, hopefully, hopefully I fall. 
And then when I learn, when I fall, I get back up. Right. And then I start writing my own books. So that, that's kind of my perspective on that. Look, folks, if you, if, if you got questions, put them in there, put a cue in front of it. So Ash can answer it. I'm just here to heckle from the back of the room, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that approach though. I think that's, that's the best way to do it. I think I'll tell you a little story with mine. I am. Um, I caused myself, I had a podcast and it's not, it's not, it's not live anymore. Um, I have many podcasts, but this podcast did really, really well. And I ended up interviewing, I was very lucky enough and completely didn't realize who they were. Love the guys now, but shout out to like Owen video and like Gloria, you, I know you like, no. yeah. so I had all these amazing people on my show that I didn't even know who they were because they, I wasn't in that scene, uh, Nick, Gloria, um, Owen and all these people. But the reality was, and I had like people, the best, creators from um linkedin and from every, from everywhere the problem is too many it's like that too many cooks in the kitchen it mm. caused me some real havoc in my in my head because i was trying to figure out my content kind of stride my process my my style and when you have the top of the top of the top people coming on this show every week and telling you how they did it you just threw your game plan out the window every single week, every single week. I go, well, one guy would be like post every single day. And then one would be like, you know, post once a month. Right. And, like, oh. and I had like Ed Lawrence, love Ed, shout out to Ed from film booth. And like Ed's come on the show and he's like, you know, I, I was doing three times a week, but now I just do like once every six weeks. And I'm thinking, <laughs> and it messed me up. Like, and the reality was um, Rob Balasabas, mm -hmm. who's a very good friend of mine. I love him to pieces. It was Rob who helped me because it was Rob that said, I was chatting to him and I was like, I was like, I don't know what to do. What to do. He was like, Ash, all these other people are talking about the way you produce content. He said, in our circles, people do know who you are. He's like, you're fast. You're producing at speed. He was like, you just, just be you. <laughs> Stop trying to be everybody else. And I think that's what you do. I think yeah. I love that. I think it's, but, but gosh, that, that plagued me, James, for six, seven months. Like it was a real problem. I was start and stop and start and stop and, you wouldn't know it from the outside looking in, but you would if you went back. But um, it Let's was see. bad. Too much and, information. And and you think about it, and, and I'm I'm a huge advocate for mental health. I'm a huge advocate, especially for men, be paying attention to their mental health. So again, that that probably mm -hmm. wrecked havoc with you internally as well, trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to yeah. trying to be to the level to the point that someone else has already gotten. They've already reached through that critical path that you're still trying to get to. And this is how they're doing it now, right? They, they've already got the multiple, you know, AdSense checks coming on the 21st. Shouts out to Google. Cause I know, yeah, the checks come on the 21st. Uh, <laughs> come on now. Uh, but you know, mul <laughs> different streams of income and things of that nature, but you're probably, we're still at the point where you're working through that, working through that process, trying to get to there. And you're trying to do now post every day, do all the edits, post once a month, you know, I mean, do all of that. And that can just be detrimental, I think, to a person's mental well-being as well. So I, I like that that comment. And yeah, by the Sabbath is, is the man. So just, oh, do, man, just yeah. do you, be you and, and do yourself and and enjoy that evolution as you grow, as, as you grow into you as a content creator. Um, like, man, this this I like this. I'm, I'm glad we got this going, man. And yeah, you know. I am. I'm loving this is just like therapy <laughs> love, for, for me. Right. Yeah. I got like one finger pointing out and three fingers pointing back at me. Exactly. Let, let, let me ask you about this, because what's old is new. Right. And a lot of folks are trying to get into audio podcasts. Right. Podcasts have been around for decades. They were cool for a while. Then I guess they they weren't cool like QR codes. And now QR codes are coming back into popularity. And people are, are really seeing that, look, this audio commentary, this audio communication, being able to be anywhere, being able to be in the gym, being able to be in the car and still consume quality content matters. Why did you... How did you see that so soon? Right, because you, you've been doing the podcasting thing before when it was cool before it was cool and now it's cool again how, how come you you kind of were an early adopter to to the audio form of content creation and content sharing yeah um i i got into podcasting i was i was an early adopter of podcasting as a listener because i'm a dyslexic guy so i i learned through audiobooks and then i realized that there were free audiobooks so i was like this is even better um 
And then I started podcasting, gosh, a long time ago now, but I've had many shows. But I never really thought much about it, if I'm really honest with you. I, I didn't see it being a big thing. I didn't think it was going to be a big thing. I actually did it as just a, a way to um, kind of give back. That was how it started. It was a way to give back to other people like dyslexics like myself who who didn't really um, – and it's kind of where I, I approach my content now, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, it's I, I just found a way of like, okay, that I, I want to make a podcast that would that would teach someone something. It wasn't just an interview – it was a solo step-by-step -step, like audio book really. Um, and so I did that and never really thought much of it and left it and um, carried on doing it once a week or whatever and saw TikTok and LinkedIn and followed all these big trends that everyone sees. And I've seen mm -hmm. it go up and down and up and down. And then um, it, I think when, when Joe Rogan was purchased for now, they say a quarter of a billion. Right. It was 100 million. But then obviously this whole thing, they Spotify wouldn't get rid of him. And then they were said, well, it's because they've invested quarter of a billion. Um, that was the first time. And the reason why I started to take notice of it is because I'm actually a gamer. I love video games. And um, this happened in the gaming space with Ninja when Ninja was, yes. they yep. bought, um, yeah. So I think uh, Mixer, Mixer paid 30 million for Ninja to sign a contract. And it brought him to the forefront and the gaming industry just blew up. True. And when I saw Joe Rogan being purchased and then subsequently all these others being purchased, and I'm not a big Joe Rogan fan at all, don't really like his show, but it's um, him being brought up. I was like, this is going to be big. Yeah. And, um, and so I started to look at it a little bit more and then, um, and then Spotify just started spending billions <laughs> and you know i think the thing with it is like when people say about being an early adopter i don't think you have to be an early adopter i think you just have to have your eyes open and you just start looking and going wait a minute, more and more people just look what's going on and for me i think that i don't think podcasting is going to be the next big thing i think video podcasting is going to be the next big thing i think this is going to be the thing that people and i think that my cons my thing i found was i can be that conduit of mm. Uh, there is a ton of, and I saw this like when I see like live stream pros like Laurie and I saw there's a ton of live streamers on YouTube who are podcasting, but they're not putting their audio onto a uh, like a, like some form of podcast. I know that you do, but right. most don't. And then there are a ton of podcasters who don't upload their audio or their video. And I was looking and I was like, this could be my moment. Then this could be I could be the bridge that bridges that gap. And that's why I jumped onto the onto the train and. And it's going and it's it's doing really well. But I do think that what we think of as podcasting and what we think of as live streaming, maybe not so much live, but like what we're doing here, that in five years time, will the lines will be completely blurred to the point where they're, they're exactly the same. And I think that the ones who are going to lose out are the podcasters. Wow. Podcasters need to be dragged to the, to the forefront. People like yourself, James, are the people who will win. And we're seeing this like like big YouTubers like big big YouTubers like whether you like them or not like Logan Paul launch a podcast and they're all of a sudden the number one. And what I couldn't get my head round and stop me if I'm ranting, but what I couldn't get my head round with this was after someone who you know works in the content marketing space for many years, we as creators are fighting for audience retention. YouTubers sure. are just we just need it tiktok it's the same thing four seconds before you move to the next thing all of this stuff and podcasters have been sat on this one thing that has the best audience retention in the world because yes. it is literally people will listen for 45 minutes and what's really funny about that is that once the uh, the, the all-round creators started start to and have started figuring that out they jump on the bandwagon and they win, not the other podcasters, because the podcasters don't have, understand retention. They don't understand marketing techniques. They don't understand micro content and production and video. They're sat in their wardrobe or their closet speaking into a microphone. They don't understand it. And I think they'll be extinct. I think it'll the, the wow. what we think and what Spotify does, that's the new, it's the end of the era of the traditional audio podcast, I think. Um, but I think it'll take a couple of years. You, I, I don't think it's going to take that long. You, you said five years. Now you're saying a couple of years. You think about this because you know that YouTube, YouTube is coming out with it. their podcasting 
capability, what that is going to be, who knows, but you know, the video podcast, and I, I like your definition of what a video podcast is when that hits, oh, it's done. It's done. Right. So YouTube and, is going to win this. And you, if you're listen, folks, and I know we got some podcasters on the line right now, and we got some social um, creators on the line right now. If you are not sharing your content, audio and video across YouTube, because as you know, it's the second biggest search engine on the planet owned by the first Google. Look, I'm trying to make it plain for the folks in the back of the room, right? <laughs> if you are not doing that today, you're going to be too late tomorrow when it's actually announced and launched because we are, we're, we're not the carp, but we, we're, we're at the lower mid tier. It's going to be those folks who are already the ones that are, that they got the plaques on their wall who are going to have the first, I don't know, insight to when it happens, they're, they're going to be giving that the full on capability, right? Cause, cause we're doing it now, but we're kind of hacking it. Right. I, I use something like sound, a, a tool called sounder, which takes my audio podcast and turns it into a video podcast with, and does yeah. the full audiogram for the whole session. Right. So, so we're hacking it together. We're doing, but once it's cleanly done and integrated, got all the algorithms, got all the SEO, got, got, got all the tags, got everything directly integrated with, with, with YouTube. We'll get it second after the folks will get our, already have the hundred thousand, 200,000, 18 million subscribers. But man, if you are not considering doing that today and right now, it's going to be too late to, to get on, to get onto it. You, you, you'll still be successful it, regardless of what you're trying to do. You, know, there's, you can still be success coming in even at, at the, at the 11th hour, but man, we're telling you, and you don't have to believe me. I'm look, I'm, I'm just here again, a heckler. Ash Borland, <laughs> look, look him up, folks. Google him. But you know, he, he's the man with the plan. But, but again, folks are really saying that to get on this trend, stay on this trend, get on this bandwagon, follow the progression, see what's happening in the marketplace. And video podcasting is the new new. It, it just is. It's the new new. So It is, mate. You see what happened with shorts and, and YouTube will yeah. win. It's, well, YouTube's yeah. going to win this. I've said this from day one, YouTube will win. And um. Like and that is why the pivot on my YouTube channel went from like doing content and um I kind of just wiped my I was not doing anything. I wasn't really doing YouTube, it was just a place to store videos, you know. Right. And then that's when I like when I was trusty gut. I've been right on so many of the things before and never really fully acted on it. And um I just was like, Okay, I'm this this podcast thing is coming and it's coming at a pace that <laughs> It's coming quicker than I would want, if I'm really honest. Like YouTube, when well, YouTube announced it, I thought it'd be five years. And my goal was I release a video every single day. Um, I, I release two videos a day. And my goal was, okay, in five years time, no one will have enough as much content on podcasting as me. Because And so then when this hits, it's going to go boom. Yeah. Uh, and then YouTube announced <laughs> that they're going to do it. And I was like... <laughs> Come on, YouTube! Not yet. Don't do it yet. But there's but, nobody else doing it as well. But but to see, so so let, let's go down that path a little bit as well, right? So I want to talk about all the content that you put out, and let's talk a little bit about the workflow. Talk a little bit about the process, mm -hmm. what you do, right? After you record a session, um, what's next, right? How how do you go from? And you, you don't have to go do the, do the whole you know whiteboard pre presentation or anything like that, but. <laughs> Con like, concept yeah. to deployment to the implementation to sharing mm -hmm. what kind, kind of what's that workflow for a typical piece of content that you put out yeah of course so a very simple you can't um first of all process is everything you mm -hmm. need a workflow if you're mm -hmm. going to put out if you're going to approach it like a business like we said before not as a hobbyist um, i had to find a system that would allow me to make content without even thinking about it so i built a um it's not mine, you know, it's just a, it's proprietary blend of things. Um, but effectively like a, a solo script. So it's like at the hook, the, um, you know, the point one, point two, point three mm -hmm. outro, that type of format. And I follow this format in everything I do. And then I effectively insert these, the, I, 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 I might get a topic. I do three bullet points on every single topic. So I'll mm -hmm. pick a topic that summer search, summer browse, the, the beauty of speaking every single day means that I can talk about what I want because I can throw, I can do two or three good, good search videos and mm -hmm. good browse videos. And then might be able to chat about something I quite like to talk about within my niche. And I, I will, I, I, I have a system. I use OneNote, And in this system, I, I have a red, amber, green system. So we call it a okay. rag system. And this system is, um, it's very complex. Many people will get it, but it's very simple. Um, 
red means it's a raw idea and I haven't fleshed it out. Amber is ideas that are ready to be recorded. And green is every single idea that I've recorded. So I've okay. done it. When they're in the red, they get taken every, every beginning of every week. I pull out seven ideas. And from those seven ideas of the raw, of the red, <laughs> and I put them and then I bullet point them. And each one, each point has to have three bullet points for this system. Um, and then I record it. And I used to reuse StreamYard and I've just moved over to Ecamm because I'm a big, I'm big, big advocate of, um, you know, live to tape. And, and I, I would prep everything and I would, I'd brand all my stuff up. So I'd use it in um, Canva and I'd make slides and, right. I'd, and, I'll, and I'll do things in and, I'll, and, you know, I'm a big, big advocate of that. And then um, I would record them and I do one every day and I, or you can block it and batch it. And each one of those will have three bullet points. This is where it gets really interesting. Each one of them has three bullet points, every one. So seven videos has, you know, seven times three. I'm terrible at numbers, whatever that would be bullet points for that, for these things. And this could be anything about podcasting, whatever you want, any minutia, tiny little things are very large. And then those three bullet points are three individual shorts. So as soon okay. as I record that video, I will then, and TikTok and stuff, I would then pick up my mobile phone and I record directly into my mobile phone on TikTok. And I do the first one, use stream beats on TikTok. So you get, so you can, <laughs> can put it everywhere without getting demonetized. Tell them folks, and then, tell them. And then I will I'd do three of them. So if you think about that, I'm going to do my numbers now so I can get my numbers right. But like from my seven, um, yeah, seven times three, yeah, 21. So 21 shorts come from those seven videos, but they're, they're contextually shot. Then they're, they're I don't clip them because try it. That's a pain. It's too hard work. Like gotcha. going back into it. So, um, and then from there they get scheduled and, um, and then this, and I schedule them onto YouTube all onto my, um, all onto my website and onto my audio. And then I transcribe them and, and I'm scheduled up. I think I'm not, I'm nine weeks ahead, seven every single day to two, like a short and a normal video a day. And the truth is with this, James, it's really easy once you know what to do because then once I do a live process. stream. You've got the process. And then I get a lot. I do a live stream on a Friday way too early for you because it'd be specific time. I've, like, I've tuned in uh, once. I've only tuned yeah, in once because it is. <laughs> it's way too early for you. Um, but I use that as an idea farm. So I use that and I get my, I get people in the community to ask questions. And when they ask questions, I save those ideas and I put them into the red file and, gosh, it might take six months, but then they come back out again when, when I'm ready. And I'm like, ah, oh, great question. And I, and I just, I just constantly put stuff in. And, um, the rule I like to follow with stuff like that is, um, is just making sure that I'm always putting in more than I take out. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the most. So you never run out of ideas. I've got about four or 500 ideas. I love um, that. I so love that's that. the process in a nutshell. I mean, I would, I could, it, it's a very deep and in, in everything I've done is like, I like this idea of reducing friction. So everything I do is about trying to find the, the, I'm trying to find the tipping point on where the quality meets the ability to make quantity. I'm mm. always looking for that. And I think, um, Ecamm has been a game changer for me with that already. Like I've been using it today and I'm already like, wow, the possibilities I can do with this because I've been using StreamYard, but, um, and because I was on a PC, but, Ecamm is a different beast. It's, it's a different. And there you go. It's a different beast. I, I I I worry about you using OneNote now that you're on on Mac. You can still use OneNote, but there are other other tools that you can take advantage of for sure. I um, think I, I'm moving over to. So the idea was to move over to Mac and yeah. move all of the ecosystem across, so I could manage things better. Because again, it was about time. So I dropped like ten grand on new equipment <laughs> to be like to speed up. Because I do believe, I, you know, I'm a. I have a business where we, where it's a consulting business on this type of stuff. And if it cost me 10 grand, that could save me a hundred grand. You know, it really could make a big, big difference. And so I'm a big believer of stream decks and, and like every bit of equipment, if it costs a couple of grand to get it, if you have the budget, but every time I've bought expensive equipment that speeds things up, I've never regretted it. I love it. I love it. And and you see, folks, perfect time in there. See, he kind of fed into that, right? I, I bring up Ash's consulting. <laughs> see, it's almost like it was all queued up, and, and, and I've done this before, right? But no, uh, <laughs> off of Ash's website, you can book some time with him. And I, I appreciate you going through that process because 
that right there from the beginning of our conversation, that could be the part that scares people away. Because again, if you, if you don't have it down to that granularity, if you don't know what your, your tags are and, and what, you know, the, the red, yellow and the green, what that red, amber and the green, those tags are, if you don't know seven times, three times, pushing out the yeah. micro content times d- doing all of this. And, and if you stop doing it for a week, if you were to stop doing your process of generating content, generating ideas, pushing out information for just seven days, you, I messes up. You, you'd, you'd be, you'd be stuck in the water, right? Because again, you, you throw your whole, your whole vibe off. You, you throw your whole delivery off. You, you, you would fall out of, out of sorts. And, and again, you, it would take more time to get back into alignment than if you just continue to follow the very detailed, very straightforward. And it, probably doesn't take a whole lot of time to complete those activities that you have within that particular process as well. Right. If, if you, if you set focus time, Oh, if you put some folk, if you, <laughs> if you, if you focus on you and put some, put some time in on your calendar and say, this is what I'm going to do. These activities, you still have time to hang out with your wife, hang out with your kids, go out and do something, do what you still have time to do and be you. Right. So it, it doesn't have uh, yeah. to be fully consumpting, uh, consumpting of, of your, your 24 hours a day. So I, I, I really wanted to put that out there, man. I, no, love I agree, that. man. Like I agree that I tell you what I felt that's something I've had is guilt. I felt guilt recently, but over the last couple of maybe, maybe eight weeks where I was like, this is up, this is flowing now. And, and, and this is taking me no time at all. This is quite nervous. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, it's true. It doesn't have to take very long, but you do just have to spend a bit of time at the beginning. I love it. I love it. Steve is talking about notion is, is the truth that yeah, notion is, is a good platform to use. And, and there's a ton of them. What do you there. think James? What's the ones that you use? I, I am, I've used them all quite frankly. I've used notion. I've used, um, uh, Nimbus I've used one right now. I have standardized on ClickUp. I, I really have standardized on ClickUp, and and the reason being there's some additional uh, functionality that integrates with Chrome that allows me to also do uh, web sharing, that allows me to do screen sharing, that, that allows me to do some other yeah. things for like building out the run of show and and, and bringing in subject matter uh, subject matter. So I really liked what Clip Up uh, Clip Up does, and the fact that it has a mobile app as well. I I got to have that right. You, you're, you're sitting. I'm not saying you're sitting on the bathroom, but say you're sitting somewhere else and you're not at your desk. But, you know, <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta come up with those ideas real quick. So so right now, I, and I think I'm going to stick with that. Uh, they all do very similar things. Uh, the Kanban boards, you know, just the, the Trello stuff and just the uh, the Monday dot com. Fantastic tools as well. But they're 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 somewhat constrained. Um, and, and even just like from a to do list and a task list. I still use the notes app that's built in the Mac, but really uh, wanting to branch out. And, and, and so I use a tool called fellow fellow dot app that actually builds my run of show. And I can actually share that with, with the guests as well. It integrates well, with my calendar. I'm I'll, I'll, listen, listen, man, we, the next show that we do since you were 30 minutes late with your technology, <laughs> Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, have we've a got pre- to actually do the show that we said we were going to do. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do a, no, we'll do a premium session, right? Because I'm oh. I'm literally building a environment and community off of I, I I don't like I know I hate Facebook. I don't want to say I don't like it. I, I really don't like Facebook. So Steve, I, I, if Steve's still watching, he knows I cannot stand it. So I know I, can, I hate I hate Facebook. So um, I, I'm building a community outside of that, and, and and really that that's where all of the premium level content in terms of having you come back and go 201 level, 301 level into that Ash Borland process of creating content, right? So we actually bring folks in, ha- have them go through one of your consulting sessions and, and actually monetize that as well. So, so that's, so stay tuned for that Love folks that, that are watching. Listen, I, I just wrote Ash in into, into doing a consulting session for us. Boom. Come me. I'll do that. I don't, I don't have all my sound effects hooked up yet on this new machine yet. So I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't do the mic drop yet, but let me, let me ask you this. Um, on the 18th, you did a post on your website talking Instagram versus TikTok versus YouTube. Where where do you, and you may have already answered this, where do you spend the most time? And where do you think is most valuable for someone in the content creation space who 
starts with podcasting. So, cause I'm going to put you in that bucket right now. I'm going to say you start with podcasting and you utilize that as your primary platform, but mm -hmm. the other micro content and the other sharing capability, does it matter to put something on a TikTok versus an Instagram versus a YouTube versus a Snapchat, things like that. You kind of talked around some of that already yeah. earlier, but I, I want to be, I don't want to have any assumptions. I want to be a little more granular yeah, in, in that, in that piece. I can talk about any, I love this stuff, man. So yeah, this is like, I got right. you brother. I got you. Um, yeah. So I think the, the vertical content, this vertical short form content is 100% here to stay. I think you, you uh, depends on what you want you'll get different results from different things. So one of the first ones is um, Instagram could be really, really big with reels, but the exposure is a lot less. So if you, if exposure is what you want, you need to go to TikTok. If potentially more long-term um, community building or something that you can monetize or that you can use a little bit better than, than reels is a, is a better choice. YouTube shorts on the, oh, the third one. I don't have a clue, but, but I still believe I had Rob Wilson from vidIQ on my show about, about eight months ago. And he was saying, um, I asked him about YouTube shorts and should you upload it? And he said, realistically, he was like, not uploading YouTube shorts right now would be like not uploading videos into YouTube in 2008 or whatever. It was like you you need this is like unpriced you know, underpriced attention. So it all depends on what you want. In my opinion, I would upload to all three. But one thing you have to bear in mind is that they all have a slightly different contextually relevant um kind of approach. So if you look at YouTube shorts, they are different to TikToks. They are different. They're they're not the same at all, really. They're like small YouTube videos. Whereas if you look at TikToks, they are shot on a mobile phone and the rawer, the better, the more amateur they look, the better they look, the better they perform. And then Instagram is like a middle ground of the two. So right now for ease of use, I would probably um, decide which platform you want, but I would upload to all three. If you've got a podcast, if you've got a YouTube channel, yeah. the reality is the, the thing with this stuff though is guys, and this is where people are getting wrong on YouTube shorts one short is not going to do anything. <laughs> I, I look at people's accounts and they're like, I've done them two shorts. Like when I was seeing exponential growth on shorts on my channel, I was uploading five a day. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't do that now. I'll do one a day. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a lot of work. <laughs> I was going to say that's um, quite, a, that's a good piece of effort right there. Okay. I did five a day for about, and they're all being unlisted now, but they were like five a day for about, I think maybe 40, days 50 days um and i was just burning through content and that's the problem that is short form content by the way if anyone wants to do exceptionally well you've got to you've got to post and you've got to post a lot except for instagram um i've kind of stumbled across something recently with instagram where it likes one it doesn't like more than one it massively reduces the reach but tiktok you can more the more you throw on it and youtube shorts is the same yeah um so it really depends on what you want from it I definitely think you should be doing shorts and this this vertical content, but I also think that you should um, you should. I wouldn't put all my creative effort behind it. I think that's the problem. People, the people are making the mistake. There you go. It's not a big deal. I just just throw something up. It doesn't really matter. I'd be putting the creative effort into what you're doing, like proper content. Yeah, that that's the hook that I was looking for right there, right? I mean, don't try to put all your eggs into that basket, right? I mean, just be strategic in terms of where you're putting your information out and and what resonates and what matters with you as a business and then obviously take yourself out of the equation and make sure you're focused on the community. Right? I mean, just free so, marketing, really. Yeah. Let's, let's just look at it like look at it yeah. as it is, it's just free organic marketing. That's yeah. what you have to look at it as. It's not I've yet to meet a single, I was on a call here, here you go, I was on a call before this uh, in a big group coaching call that I do um, with another couple of, and they're mortgage brokers mm. uh, and they're, they're trying to generate leads. And I told this one broker, he said, TikTok is the place to be. Da, 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 da. And I, this is about four or five weeks ago. And I said, no, don't waste your time on it. I said, it's fine, but you're going to, it's going to take up a lot of your time and you're going to get, and you're going to, you won't get the results you want for the effort you put in. And, 
anyway, he hadn't seen him for, for four or five weeks. He came back this week and he said, Ash, he said, and he was, and today he said, Ash, he said, I'm getting, I went from like zero to seven, uh, 9,000 followers and I'm get generating 10 to 15 leads a week, sorry, a day. And I was like, and I was like, okay. And I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the punchline. And, I, and someone in the group went, well, how many of them converted? And he said, oh, like maybe one or two a week. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I said, I said, let's just stop for a second. I said, so you're speaking to 10 to 15 people a day to convert one to two a week. And he was like, uh, yeah. And I was like, that's what I told you not to do. Yeah. You're missing the point. And this is the thing people don't get. The numbers are attractive. Behavioral psychology. We start from the beginning. But don't be drawn into it because the, the numbers don't mean anything. The, the people who are looking at your shorts and your TikToks and your reels, if you ever, if you suffer with hate, like people like bad comments, I've the, the worst of humanity scrolls through a short feed. Like I've had some of the most disgusting <laughs> things said to me when I was doing those five a day because you are doing interruption based marketing. People have not asked to see your content, it's being forced upon them. Yes. So if they don't like it, very different, James, to someone like coming onto this and going, I want to learn about this. I don't know who these guys are, but I'm going to watch them and see what they do. It's a very different thing. They've opted in and they found it. Long form, I think long form like this, this is the stuff that people should be making. It's more important in the long run than these shorts. Absolutely. 100% agree which is why I do it. Appreciate you for saying that because again, just kind of a, a tick in, the, in that column. But, but again, <laughs> so, and, and I'll add to that long form content that rises above the noise because there's a lot yes. of noise out there, right? So have something to talk about that that is of substance as opposed to up, just rise above the noise. I'm, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll just say that, yes. It's the niche, James. Like yes. I had, I had um, a guy, uh, Rich Cardona, love, love Rich, and he's a friend of mine, and he is a podcaster who just, he just, um, he was a, a, doing an entrepreneur podcast, and it was called the Leadership Locker, and it was done really well. He's had mm. Gary V, and he had Jacko Wilnick, and he's had all these amazing people, and um, he, but he never really did really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he did all right, but he said, and then I had him on my show because he released. I've, I've had him on the show multiple times, but he said this one thing, and he said. Um, him and Heather Parody launched NFTs for newbies. Okay. And in, in less than six weeks, it became top 50 global podcast with zero marketing, completely organic. Wow. And wow. I asked him on the show and they had the interviews coming out soon. I said, why did you, what, what happened? And he said, Heather said to me, he, I said, I said to Heather, oh, I do a, 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 you know, an entrepreneur podcast. And she said, not another entrepreneur <laughs> podcast. <laughs> And he said, sometimes you have to take the skills you have and put them into somewhere where they're less, they're not being used. And then you'll have a chance of rising above the noise. And that's the problem. That's the reason I shut my podcast down before is I had another podcast talking with another load of marketing people without a community because you guys have communities. You're smart. You build it in that way. But if you don't, you're just another show. Why would they listen? Why, why is anyone going to come and listen to Nick Nimmin on my podcast? when they could watch him stream for four hours live every Saturday, every Saturday morning, <laughs> you're uncut Nick. You know what I mean? It's not even like, yeah. like you're not going to, it's a different and people can't seem to grasp that. And that's why to take you full circle back to the niche. That's why niches are very important because when you have a niche, people are rallying behind your specific topic. They're not rallying behind you. You become the glue, but the thing itself is actually the topic, not you. And it's a really weird thing and i nick that from i've been clipping a clip up right now with from loria and she was saying that because she's the community queen yeah and and she said that she said you you know the community is everything because they commune around a bowl of food she said cats there's got this clip i've got and it's like cats around a bowl of food and she said you're not the food you're just the person that pours it Oh my and gosh. I was like, and it's a, such, and I, I'd love to say it's mine, but it's not. It's pretty it's good, the queen though. Of yeah, it's pretty, you know, you, you can you can make sure you just you know put paraphrase. yourself in the bibliography. Yeah, paraphrase <laughs> it right. But I appreciate you for saying that because I was literally going to bring it back to the niche conversation, and you, you you did that perfectly because that really puts the bow around the conversation, folks. Right? We had to cover. We we talked about why it is we do what we do from a content creation, content delivery perspective. Talked about what matters today and what's going to matter tomorrow. And if you aren't paying attention to the conversations and the trends of what's coming tomorrow, it's going to be too late because tomorrow is going to be here today. And it's already close to being here. Uh, 
Gary Jones, good to see you, man. I hope you, you were here for the entire thing. If not, man, you got to get the replay because Ash Borland is here. And when I, like the old EF Hudden, I may be dating myself, but you know, when, when, when Ash Borland speaks, everyone lists, I, I, I look, I'm 52 years old, hey, but I, I, I've I'll been, be. a, <laughs> you know but, that old but you know, but, but again, and then again, kind of as, as that, that third piece where really matters to put out your content, right? Focus on a particular platform, but then understand that all the other ancillary pieces are just marketing activities, but make sure it's high quality when you put it out there. If you're going to make a podcast and you're going to put it out there and you're going to be syndicated on Apple and Spotify, know how to use TikTok, know how to use Instagram, know how to use these other ancillary platforms to push out your message from an advertising perspective. So, and then you brought it back to the niche. Damn, again, you... It's like you've been been, been here before, man. You, you do this professionally. Well, I think I'll be good at this. Do you know what I mean? So my my view my view counts. My subscriber level doesn't show it, but you know, mate, I do know a thing or two. <laughs> well, you know, and, and tell folks about that. So on the way out, tell the folks again how they can get in contact with Ash Borland, so they can reach out and have that conversation about you from a technology consulting perspective, the the the, the services that you offer and things of that. But tell tell the folks what you've got coming up next as well, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, of course, James. Yeah, no, if people want to, if people want to find me, um, you can go to ashballen.com, which is just my main channel. It's just my main website. Um, but best place is ashballen on YouTube. That's where all the content is daily uploads and stuff. And then, um, Instagram is the best place to reach out if you want to message me because, um, I use that kind of as like a messaging platform now. So that's at ashballen. It's just ashballen everywhere. And, um, I am genuinely 100% open to any questions. I love questions. And if you have a question that you would like, um, please, please, please send me a send me it because I'll put it in the in the uh, the red section and then you'll, it'll come out. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll put it in the queue, right? It'll be red and amber, and the next queue. thing you know, oh, see, there you go. Take it, take advantage of the resource, folks. And I'll give you a little shout out. You know, that's what I do. I always say these questions come from blah blah blah. blah. And if you if you're over the thousand subscriber or five hundred, <laughs> I can even tag you. You know. I love it. I love it. Listen, Ash, this, I, I know I gave you a hard time and I'm, I was completely joking man, about <laughs> no, uh, man, starting, starting late and all, but, but My fault. It, it was fun behind the scenes because just going, going through the iterations of, okay, I got brand new equipment here. How do I get it set up? You know, how come my <laughs> mic is not coming through? My mic's coming through my webcam. How come my internet, right? So going through that, but the fact that we did it. We didn't, no one panicked. We said, you know, let, let's just start ticking things off and figure out the best way to do it. But then the, when the aha moment happened and then who, who knows what, whatever it was, there was a shift in the matrix and things started working. It was all good. And listen, man, this has been an, an hour that I will remember. And hopefully folks, you got some value out of this. If you did tell somebody, share it. If you didn't get value out of it, that's all right. Let me know. So we, we, can, we can try to do better. Look, the, the skin is thick. So, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings. And reach out to Ash Borland, folks, if you have any questions, again, on a serious note, if you got any questions about content delivery, content creation, podcasting, the man knows how to do it and do it the right way. I'm humbled by having you on the show, sir. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do. It's 11 p.m. on your side of the pond right now. Um, go to sleep. Man, I'll stay up later than this for, for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Be good. Folks, take care of yourself, and I will talk to you soon.